my channel and thank you so much for watching. So today I'm doing a super bright spring look. I've been wanting to do this for a while and I don't know, then I wanted to do other stuff and then things came up and then I don't know, I just haven't done it, but I finally did it. So the whole reason why I wanted to do this look is because I got this eyeshadow from ColourPop called Flower Shop. It's like this really beautiful like seafoam greenish blue color. It's what I have all under um, like my lash line today. I just love the color so much and the second I saw it I was like lower lash line, yes. Yes. So you guys know I paired this look with a bright lip just because I wanted to keep it very spring. I wanted to keep it colorful. I wanted to keep it fun. But you can totally do this look with a nude lip. It would look just as pretty. And I really feel like pops of bright colors are going to be so in style now for spring. Like before, like last year and in previous years, it's always been like the pop of a bright lip color. But I feel like this year, it's a lot more of like pops of color on your eyes. And I feel like the easiest way to do that is by just throwing a, like a really pretty bright color on your lower lash line. I know color is kind of scary sometimes. I'm like the first person that every time I sit down to do my makeup, I always go neutral. Sometimes I go green. That's, I, I like going green, but green is still kind of neutral. Like olive is like kind of neutral. And then sometimes I'll go orange, but it's still neutral because I'm like, warm oranges with gold, which is like earthy neutral, so pretty much always neutral. I very rarely ever use blues, pinks, purples, like I never really use colors like that and I feel like that's going to be really in style now for spring and it's just so easy to just throw it on your lower lash line and it's like instantly like pop a color and it looks so pretty. So you guys know this is a full face tutorial, I haven't done one in a while lately, I've just been doing just like my eyes and that's it. But in this tutorial, I do everything. Like I do my eyebrows, I show you how I put on my eyelashes, my foundation, my concealer. It's a full face tutorial. So if you're interested in seeing how I got this super colorful, super spring look, then just go ahead and keep on watching. Hello, hello everybody. And like I said before, welcome back to my channel. Just getting ready here to start doing my makeup, you know, getting my hair out of my face and all that fun stuff. By the way, if you follow me on Snapchat, you already heard about this mug. I was super offended by it at first, but I have to say, it's growing on me. It's growing on me, guys. I was feeling like a crazy bitch that day, so it worked out. So, let's just get into the tutorial before I start rambling. Okay, let's go. Okay, so I have already moisturized my face. I always moisturize my face before I start my makeup. You always want to put down a nice layer of something before you start caking up your face so that it just doesn't clog up your pores, you know? I'm using my Hangover RX Primer from Too Faced all over my face. I absolutely love this primer. It's so hydrating, so moisturizing, and it makes my makeup go on so nice. It's all I've been using, I love it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put on some foundation. This is my favorite foundation combo at the moment, and it is the Rimmel Lasting Finish Foundation mixed together with Armani Luminous Silk. So I just went ahead and mixed that together on a little mixing palette next to me, and I'm dipping my Real Techniques Beauty Sponge into it and just pressing it in all over my face. I always apply my foundation with a sponge using little pouncing motions all over my face you never want to rub with a sponge that's when you get like those ugly streaks you always want to pounce 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 obviously obviously i was listening to the new beyonce album while i did my makeup Who's not listening to the new Beyonce album while they do their makeup? Like, let's be serious. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and do a little color correcting under my eyes a little bit. I'm gonna use the Becca Under Eye Illuminator. I think that's what it's called. I don't know, I'll list it below, but it's that little pink stuff that Becca has. And I'm just gonna apply it right in the area where I have like a little bit of a bag or like a little bit of darkness right under my eye. I'm just using a little synthetic brush to apply it, apply this and then I'll take my beauty blender and pounce it in to blend it all out before I apply my concealer. So now I'm just going to go ahead and conceal. I have been absolutely obsessed with this concealer lately. And it is the Tarte Aqua Sealer from their new Rainforest of the Seas collection. It is amazing and the applicator is bomb.com. I'm obsessed. I love it. So I'm just going to apply it to one side of my eye and then go ahead and use my sponge and little pouncing motions to blend it all in. This concealer tends to dry pretty quickly, so I always like apply it and then blend it out. I won't apply it over my whole face and then start blending it because by the time I finish blending one eye and I get to the second eye, 
the second eye will already be dry. So I apply it, blend it out, apply it, blend it out, apply it, blend it out. I'm also applying a little dab of this right on my eyelid because I am going to use this as my eye primer. This is my favorite way to prime my eyes, just with good old regular concealer. So now I'm going to go ahead and bake and I'm going to be using the Laura Mercier translucent powder for this today. So I just like to kind of like look up to stretch out any of the little wrinkles under my eyes and use my sponge to buff out any concealer that already got stuck in the wrinkles. And while I'm still looking up, look, I'm keeping the face, I'm keeping it, I'm, I'm staying up, staying up. I'm going to dip my little poof, my little powder poof into the powder and just apply a really heavy amount right under my eyes to let it bake. This is just really going to help my under eyes from creasing throughout the day. And this Laura Mercier powder isn't really actually translucent, I've noticed. It is pretty brightening, so it's also going to help to brighten my under eye area. Taking that same concealer, I'm going to go ahead and apply it to all the areas that I normally do. So the middle of my forehead, down my nose, my cupid's bow, and my chin. And then using my sponge, I'm going to go ahead and use little pouncing motions to blend all that out. I do have a little bit of like smile lines on my face and I do tend to crease there a lot so I like to take my sponge after I've blended on my concealer and using whatever's left over on it I like to pounce it on my smile lines and then bake my smile lines the concealer since it's lighter is just gonna help to kind of um, bring out any hollowness in my smile lines it kind of counteracts that hollowness the light and then I just like to bake it to really help with the creasing Now that I've wiped away all of that bakage, I'm just going to go ahead and set the rest of my face with powder. I am, of course, using my MAC Mineralized Skin Finish. I'm in the color Medium Golden. I always speak so highly of this powder. I absolutely love it. It's just got such a beautiful sheen to it, and it makes your skin look so healthy and like, oh, I don't know. I just love it. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my Kabuki and little swirling motions to go ahead and buff that into my whole face. And now I'm complaining that I have no eyebrows because I got no eyebrows. You guys are seeing it right now. So now that I've buffed out any excess product from my eyelids, I'm going to pick up my Lorac Mega Pro 2 palette and mix together the colors porcelain and custard and I'm just going to begin to set my eyelids. I'm packing on the most color right on my brow bone and then I'm dragging it down into my crease and onto my lid. I just like to lay down a nice powder base before I begin to apply any of my other eyeshadows because what happens is cream products tend to absorb powders so if you just put down like a primer or a concealer all over your eye and then try to start blending colors it's going to be really hard to blend it's going to come out very choppy because the concealer is just going to absorb the color so i like to lay down a nice powder base to make it way easier to blend and apply our eyeshadows after picking up that same lorac palette and my morphe m504 brush i'm going to go into the color melon and kind of start to do a wash of this color across my eye i know that sounds weird and this is a little bit of a different technique but what i'm doing is i'm putting the brush on the outermost part of my eye and swiping it inward to kind of like just do a wash a soft nice wash of color across my eye i start on the outer part of my lid and then start blending it up into my crease and taking it in towards the area close to my tear duct but not all the way to my tear duct just towards my tear duct and I'm just going to keep blending that and blending that and blending that out once I see that the brush isn't depositing so much color anymore I'm really going to start to blend out the edges so the outermost edge of my eye which you see me doing right now the area under my brow bone just to make sure that it's nice and seamless and there's no harsh lines by the way this brush is one of the brushes that came in the Morphe Me package for the month of April yeah for the month of April and oh my god this brush the M504 and the one that I'm about to use next are probably two of my new favorite brushes. They're absolutely incredible. Oh wait, I'm going to use a brush after this. Not yet. So I'm using the ColourPop eyeshadow in the color Lovely. This is also one of my favorite eyeshadows right now. I'm just dipping my finger into it and I'm packing on the most product towards the inner part of my eye. And then once I get to that melon color, I'm kind of just using whatever's left over on my finger and doing little flicking motions to seamlessly blend it into that color without there being a harsh line because you know me I don't like harsh lines 
but I have been using this eyeshadow non-stop. It's just such a beautiful color. It looks good on its own. It looks good on top of other eyeshadows. If my beauty favorites video worked, you would have known that, but don't worry, I'm going to refilm it. It'll be up soon. So now picking up that same palette, I'm going into the color Tangerine, and now I'm using the Morphe M505 brush. It's basically the same as the M504, except a little bit smaller. So I'm packing this on in the outer, outermost part of my eye, and then pulling it inward the same way I did with the other color, with that first color, the melon color, to continue on with that like wash of color across my eye. I want this to look very soft and blended and just like if, I don't know, like I just swiped my eye and all this beautiful color appeared, if that makes sense. So I'm using the same exact technique, just with a smaller brush, and I'm just applying this right on top of the melon color. Once I'm done applying the tangerine color, I'm picking up my Morphe M504, which was the first brush that I used, the bigger one, and I'm just blending it all out, especially the edges, to make sure that it's nice and blended together. These Lorac eyeshadows are so absolutely amazing. They're so pigmented, they're so blendable. Like I really think that the Lorac eyeshadows are my number one favorite eyeshadows of all time. If you've never tried them, really like go out and try them. They are, oh, I don't know why, I just love them so much and I don't know why people don't talk about them more. And if you have this palette, it has some bomb colors for spring. So I suggest reviving it, pulling it out and uh, using some of these spring colors because it's got beautiful spring colors. So now I'm just going back into that ColourPop eyeshadow in the color Lovely and just kind of touching it up because we kind of lost a little bit of it when we used that tangerine color. So again, just packing on in the inner corner of my eye, using whatever's left over to blend it into the corners, in, in the outer corners of my eye. Really also blending whatever's left over on my finger up into the area right underneath of the inner part of my eyebrow because I kind of want it to like ombre out to go from like really intense glitter to like softer glitter and to like the oranges so I'm just pulling it up under my brow bone and I really loved how it ended up looking. So now I'm going into the star of the show which is the ColourPop Super Shock the ColourPop Super Shock Shadow Super Shock Shadow Wow, that is a tongue twister. In the color Flower Shop, and I'm just gonna run this all underneath of my lash line. This is gonna be like that really beautiful blue pop of color that we have, and it really is the star of the show. I'm dragging this from the outermost corner of my eye all the way to the innermost corner of my eye. I want it to be super bright and pigmented and intense all the way across my lower lash line. So I just continue to pack it on and pack it on until it's to the intensity that I want it to be at. That is literally one of my favorite parts of the entire album, if it's not my number one favorite part. Like, how funny is that? I can't. So now I'm using the ColourPop eyeliner. Honestly, guys, I can't think of the name off the top of my head, but it's the white one. I'll list it below. And I'm putting this right on my lash line. I absolutely adore the ColourPop eyeliners. They're amazing. They're so pigmented. Like, I went to go work out, and that eyeliner was still in my waterline. Those things do not move they're incredible so now i'm just going to coat my eyelashes with some mascara and i'm using the Too faced better than sex mascara so i'm just going to coat my top and bottom lashes with that and then i will move on to some falsies Whoop, I'm a liar. I did my eyebrows before I did my falsies. So what I like to do when I do my eyebrows, I always use brow powders. I'm a brow powder girl. I don't like the pencils, pomades here and there, but I'm usually always powder. So I like to make a line from the innermost part of my eyebrow all the way to the outer part so I can kind of see where my arch is and see the actual shape of my eyebrow. So I have the issue that in the top part of my eyebrow, I don't grow hair. So like where you're supposed to have an arch, I just don't grow hair. So I start to fill in in that area and connect it to the tail of my eyebrow. Once I've done that, I start to fill in the front of my eyebrow and connect that to my bald spot. Right now I'm using the color Taupe, which is a very light color. It's from Anastasia Beverly Hills, the brow powder in the color Taupe. Once I've made my initial shape, I pick up the color Ebony, which is the darkest color, and I start to fill in my legit bald spot with the color Ebony. I fill in my bald spot and the tail of my eyebrow with Ebony, just because since I have no hair there, I want to use a darker color. Because if I use Taupe, for example, in my bald spot, it's it's gonna look lighter than the rest of my eyebrows. So then I pick up a little bit more taupe, fill in the front of my eyebrow, and then I use my spoolie to kind of 
just blend all those colors out and to make it look more like hair like strokes as opposed to a bunch of powder so I just keep on applying a little bit of powder and then spooling it out to blend it so now I have one eyebrow and you can see what a hot mess the other one is it's crazy I literally I don't know where what happened in my life that I just don't have eyebrows I don't know whatever so again I like to draw my line on the bottom to create my initial shape then I start to fill in my bald part of my eyebrow where my arch should be all using the color taupe from Anastasia Beverly Hills and then to really fill in my bald spots I go back in with the color ebony to fill those pieces in and then I just continue to blend it out using a little spoolie on the other end of my brush if you guys want a more in-depth video solely about how I do my eyebrows I'm more than happy to do that for you guys just let me know if you want to see it because trust me I think I know better than anybody what a struggle eyebrows can be because uh, I just don't have any so I'd be more than happy to do that for you guys just let me know if that's something you'd like to see And voila, I have eyebrows. Woohoo! So now I'm just gonna go ahead and apply my false lashes. I'm just using the Wispy Lashes from Ardell. These are some of my favorite go to lashes from the drugstore. I love them. So I just like to apply the glue. I'm just using the regular glue that like comes with them. Nothing crazy. And I like to wait for it to get tacky. So I wait about 30 to 40 seconds after I apply the glue. So the glue gets a little bit tacky. I like to come up from the top, as you saw place the eyelash right in the center of my eye and then using tweezers I like to pull the outer edge into my lash line and then start pulling the inner edge towards my lash line once I've applied the lash I kind of like to go through and squeeze it to make sure that my eyelash and the falsie are super close together once I see that the corners are stuck in and everything is looking good I like to kind of close my eye get close to my mirror and make sure that that false lash band is pushed up all the way into my lash line coffee, I got bae, so waiting for the eyelash glue to dry, it's not bad, it's not that bad. So now I'm just going to repeat the same exact thing on the other side, I'm coming in from the top, placing that eyelash right in the middle of my eye, I'm going to stick in the outermost corner, then I'm going to stick in the innermost corner, once I see that it's stuck in good, I'm going to kind of wave my hand around it to make sure that it's getting nice and dry, and then once I see that it looks good when my eyes open, I'm going to close my eye and make sure that it's pressed in all the way up against my lash line, because sometimes you'll think that your eyelash is on good, and then when you close your eye and the glue's already dry, you'll realize that the eyelash isn't glued to your lash line, it's actually glued to your eyelash. And you can see the whole band up against your eyelash, which is not cute. So now I'm just going to use my mascara to make sure that my real lashes are just connected to my falsies. If you can tell, I'm not pulling the wand all the way through my eyelashes. I'm just pulling it kind of like at the base to make sure that I'm getting mascara on my actual lashes, not on the tips of the falsies because I don't want to look like I have spider eyes. So now I'm just picking up my Makeup Revolution Shimmer Brick in the color Radiant, mixing together the two top colors and highlighting the inner corners of my eyes. So now I'm going to go ahead and finish up the rest of my face. I'm using the e.l.f. Bronzer Palette in Bronzed Beauty and I'm mixing together the second and third colors in that palette. And I'm just going to bronze my face as I normally do, so I'm going to go down my cheekbones and then up against my hairline around the perimeter of my face to make sure I have a nice even bronze going on all around my face. And then you're going to see that what I'm going to do is once I'm done bronzing my face and I feel like there's enough bronzer going on, using whatever's left over on the brush, I'm going to kind of just dust that brush all over my entire face so that I don't have like these really sharp, harsh lines all over my face. It's going to kind of, there I go. It's going to kind of help to make it look a little more blended and that I have a nice natural bronze going on on my face. So now I'm going to pick up this Makeup Revolution blush palette in the color Hot Spice and I'm going to go into this color right here. And I'm just going to put a little bit of blush on the apples of my cheeks. I'm doing a little no teeth smile and doing little upward swishing motions to fuse together my highlight and my bronze. And to just kind of add a little bit of color to my cheeks. 
As always, I'm just going to take my clean stippling brush and do some little swirly motions all over my face to make sure that everything is nice and blended together and that there's no harsh lines. Going back into my Makeup Revolution Shimmer Brick in the color Radiant, I'm going to mix together those top two colors again. And I'm just going to go ahead and highlight my face. If you notice, I like to put the color on my brush, then spritz my brush with Fix Plus, and then apply it. This just helps to keep my actual powder from getting messed up. Because sometimes if you spray your brush with Fix Plus first and dip it into a powder, it'll make the powder chalky and like over time mess it up. So I like to spritz my brush after I've dipped it into the powder. So after I've applied it to my cheekbones, I'm just going to apply a little bit right over the tops of the highest point of my eyebrows, you know, my fake arches. And then I'm gonna apply some to the tip of my nose and on my cupid's bow. Moving on to lips. Okay, so originally I used the ColourPop Ultra Satin Lip in the color Botanics. You're gonna see it right now. It's like a really light but bright pink color. It's from their new spring collection. And um, I, I think I'm just too tan for this. Like I felt like I looked like Ronald McDonald. I literally, it just wasn't working. I was not liking it. So if you have fairer skin than me, it'll probably work really well. It did not work on my skin tone. It was just way too light, way too pastel. So instead, I picked up the ColourPop Ultra Satin Lip in the color Naked Ladies, which I wore this color a couple days before I filmed this video, and I absolutely loved it. It's like a beautiful, bright, like pink fuchsia oh it's awesome i love it and i absolutely love the color pop ultra satin lip formula it's incredible and here is the final look guys I hope you guys liked this video. I hope you thought it was helpful. I hope that this kind of pushes you guys to use little pops of color in your makeup because I know sometimes it can be not scary but a little like intimidating when you see these bright colors. Like a lot of times I'll swatch bright colors and I'm like, oh, it's so beautiful. And then I'll take it home and I won't even use it because I'm like, what am I going to do with that? Lower lash line. When in doubt, just throw the bright color on your lower lash line. I'm telling you. Works out great. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. And if you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. I keep looking at myself, sorry. This is like where my little mirror is, so.